Good evening, everyone. Just want to welcome you to another Facebook Live. So happy to have each and every one of you uh, with us tonight. I'm excited about our message. There's a lot that I want to cover. Um, and so as people are calling in or actually tuning in, just want to give you a brief introduction of who I am. Some of you are familiar with me. Some of you may not be. But my name is Asani Pettiford, and I'm the co-founder of Couples Academy. Couples Academy is a relationship-based learning institute that's committed to helping couples by placing them on the path to fulfillment. I've been fortunate enough, uh, hey Paula, to have written 14 books. As you know, my latest one, The Audacity of Marriage, 10 Principles of Lifelong Partnership uh, has just been released. You can go to amazon.com right now and get the paperback or the Kindle. Um, I've hosted three television shows. Uh, I've been on CW Network, TV One, BET, just a number of different networks, TBN. Uh, and excited to really have this interpersonal relationship with each and every one of you through the form of Facebook. So tonight, we're going to be talking about infidelity, but this time, we want to discuss marital patterns or relationship patterns that contribute to an affair. A lot of times, we're doing things unbeknownst to us uh, that actually get our relationship in trouble and create a vulnerability, if you will, create a hole, a wedge, a gap. Uh, and so what we have found is that when you look at most marriages today, upwards of 50% of all marriages end in divorce. And so that implies that there's an additional 50% who remain together. But the question becomes, how happy are those couples? We know that there's 30% of them who uh, have experienced a social or emotional divorce. So if you count the 50 who have experienced a legal divorce, and the 30% who've experienced a social or emotional divorce, that is 80% of all marriages who go through some type of divorce. Uh, that also implies that there's 20% of all married couples who have somehow figured it out, gotten it right. And so we want to talk about what is causing so many couples to fall into these pitfalls and these traps that ultimately lead to an affair. So if you're watching right now, I want you to share this video. You may not have experienced infidelity in your relationship, but I'm sure that you know someone who has. So share this video right now <coughs> with everyone who you believe could benefit from it. Three marital patterns, we're not gonna be on too long. Marital pattern, or if you're not married, relationship pattern number one that can lead to an affair is what we would call the windshield wipers, okay? Well, what is the windshield wipers? If any of you have a vehicle that you drive and it's ever snowed or rained, typically you would turn on your windshield wipers because your windshield wipers, what? Wipe away the rain or the snow that hits your windshield so that you can clearly see. And if you look at the movement of my hands, many couples operate just like this. From a distance, it looks like they're the perfect couple. They're a, a power couple, if you will. They have skill sets, they flow, they function. Uh, but really, that is the nature of their relationship. They can come together and perform tasks and do things well. This is a relationship where their focus or their uh, dynamic point would be their partnership not their companionship. So when it comes to tasks, duties, obligations, oh, they can knock it out. These are examples of people who have great marriages on paper. Finances are together, bills taken care of, kids in school, um, they're planning things for their future, but there's no relationship. And so we've experienced that many couples, the 80% that we were talking about initially, have experienced some form of an emotional disconnect. When you become emotionally disconnected, that's when the potential for danger can happen in your relationship. So a windshield wiper, right? They function well. But if you notice, on a car or a van or an SUV, the only time when one windshield wiper touches the next is if one of those windshield wipers breaks and happens to physically collapse into the other windshield. Likewise, in relationships, the only time that these couples get close enough to actually touch is when something <laughs> has actually gone wrong. And so they do everything in their power to create that distance because that distance for this couple represents safety. The distance for this couple represents familiarity that is almost uncomfortable if we're getting too close. And so this is a couple who will create fights and have feuds and will have all types of, I don't know, intentional arguments to create the distance. Don't get too close. 
You know, it's okay that we function together, but I don't want you getting into my heart and getting into my mind, and I don't want to become intimate with you. You stay over there, I'll stay over here. We will function in this relationship. And what happens is, with this emotional disconnect, at some point, it creates a hunger or an appetite for some type of an emotional connection with another human being. And in that particular case, that's when we find that people can venture off, whether intentionally or unintentionally, and wind up in adulterous affairs. <clears throat> so marital pattern number one is what we would call the windshield wipers. The second uh, marital pattern that impacts marriages in, in, in a tremendous way is what we would call the dial tones. Now, many, 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 many years ago, for all of you millennials who are on this uh, Facebook Live, there was something called a touch tone phone. If you ever heard of a landline, if you ever heard of a pay phone, when you pick it up, on the other end of that phone, you hear a dial tone. And it goes beep, right? And so that dial tone, which is the same sound that you hear constantly over the course of time, the more you hear it, it can get quite annoying. But a dial tone relationship represents a relationship that is predictable, a relationship that is boring, a relationship that has become monotonous. And we've talked about this before, how monogamy unfortunately leads to monotony. And couples who don't date they don't spend uh, recreational companionship together. They don't invest time getting to know each other because as you enter into your relationship, you're going to experience different seasons in that relationship, which will require you to get to know that person all over again. On that note, let me make this great point. Here's a great analogy. There's something called the moon to earth syndrome. Okay. Now, if you at night, it's, it's night, no matter where you are in the country, for the most part, if you walk outside or look outside your window into the sky and notice the moon, that moon may be a crescent moon. It may be a half moon. It may be a full moon. But what you're seeing is one face or one side of the moon. If you wanted to see the other side of the moon, you would literally have to travel into space and look down from a different angle to see the other side of the moon. The other side is what is referred to as the dark side of the moon. Now, each of us have a dark side. Now, when I say dark side, I do not mean evil or wicked or sinister side. But what I mean is an undiscovered side. And there are aspects of your partner, I don't care how long you've been with them, that you haven't discovered. You're always learning your partner. So if you think, well, we were good in the dating phase and we really got the chance to know each other and as a result, we got married and we figured everything out, you're sadly mistaken. Because not only do you learn information through question and answer, but you learn information through what? Experiences that you have. And you'll begin to see different sides, different angles, different perspectives of your partner. So if you think about a 28-day moon cycle, you go from a crescent moon to a half moon to a full moon and all types of variations in between. You're seeing different slivers and aspects of who that person is. And it is through these experiences that you really get to know who that person is. So if you are in intentional to begin to explore your partner, then it makes for a great relationship. But when you take your partner for granted, when you assume that you already know what they're thinking, you figure out, you know what, I can complete their senses. There's nothing new to learn. There's nothing new to do. And, and boredom sets in, then that's when it creates what? An emotional disconnect. Because someone is still yearning for excitement. They're still learn, yearning for something new. And if they can't find it in their partner, they will either intentionally or unintentionally find it in someone else. So the second marital pattern is what we will call the dial tones. <coughs> My cough is getting better. I appreciate your prayers. The third marital pattern is what we've identified as the empty nest syndrome. Now, this is a doozy. Now, if you know anything about having kids, the majority of you can relate to this. So when you got married to your partner, you put on your husband hat and your wife hat. But as soon as you had that first child, all of a sudden, you take off your husband and your wife hat and you put on your mommy and your daddy hat. 
So the attention that you once gave each other, you now give to the child. The love that you once gave each other, you now give to the child. The affection that you once contributed to one another, you now give to the child. The resources, the finances, baby needs braces, baby wants to join a football team, baby wants to do cheerleading, whatever it is, you will give up anything and everything to accommodate your child when at some point those resources may have been spent to invest in your marriage. And so we know that when it comes to a bank account, you can't withdraw if you haven't made a deposit. And we have stopped making deposits in one another and we've put all of our deposits into a child. And so what that does, it creates a major issue in the marriage for a couple of reasons. Number one, as couples, if I no longer connect with you horizontally because I'm focusing on my vertical relationship with my child, then years go by, I'm just a partner. You're just a partner. We're emotionally disconnected. So I still am a human with feelings and emotions and, and desires. And if I can't get it met in you because I see you as mommy or you see me as daddy, I'm going to search or intentionally wind up in an unfortunate relationship with someone else and something may ensue. Now, when that child becomes 18 and leaves the home, now you have two parents, uh-oh, partners who are strangers in the same household. They don't know each other. They can't connect. They're like strangers living in the household who've raised these children. Now, the reason why this is problematic for the child is simply this. If a child feels that there's no horizontal love being distributed between mom and dad and all the love is being brought down to him or her vertically, yes, they feel loved, but they don't feel like they're in a loving environment. And children learn through observation and participation. So in essence, it's not about the lessons you teach your child. It's about what you demonstrate in your behavior to your child. And what happens is whatever they see in you, you become the model that they begin to mirror. And so now they will play out in their adult relationships what they saw in their home. And so they may have the routine of loving, <coughs> loving their child and making themselves uh, the number one responsible partner of being the best, the best uh, mother or best father they can be, and secondary would be the best partner. But we believe in partners first, parents second. And when you have that foundation, then you're able to have emotional connection because it's about giving to the marriage. I always say that the best gift that you could ever give your child is the love that the parent has for one another. Because when they can sense it and feel it in the environment, they also benefit from that type of expression. So these are the marital patterns. Now, the question is, where do you find yourself? Are you in one of these marital patterns? And if you are, which one do you closely identify with? Whichever one you identify with, it's time to begin to have conversations and to figure out how you can break the pattern. You know, one of the greatest movies that I've watched and I share with all of my clients when they come into counseling is a movie called Groundhog's Day. If you've never seen it, watch it. If you saw it 10, 15 years ago, watch it again because it talks about life patterns. And ultimately, here's a man who was stuck in a time warp who was trying to get out of this day. But every day he woke up, it was the same day. And so 10 days later, it was the same day. And he lived the same day for over 33 years. And it wasn't until he made changes within himself that his day began to change. And likewise, when it comes to our relationships, <coughs> we're so focused on wanting to fix the relationship and when you're trying to fix a relationship, you're working on something outside of yourself. You're not working on you. So now you, you're, you're working on an entity that has nothing to do with you. It represents a commonality or a bond that you have with another person. But we, what we have found is that when you begin to work on you, making internal vows within yourself, focusing on your own personal growth and self-development, your spiritual transformation, your emotional healing, when you become unstuck in certain areas and become the best person that you can be, you're in essence breaking the pattern. And when the pattern is broken, you're able to then create a new pattern and have a new day. So many of us have been living the same day in our relationships for the past five, 10, 15 years. And no matter how much we try, no matter how much effort we give each other, we feel like We'll never get out of this thing. Is this thing ever going to change? Are things ever going to get better? 
And I just want to encourage you to let you know that you may be stuck or trapped in a marital pattern that you are unaware of. And so sometimes it takes stepping back and reflecting about your situation and figuring out what new knowledge or what new skill you can add to begin to redirect, reverse, or break the pattern and create one anew. So if infidelity is something that you've experienced, then you may want to review these patterns. If you haven't yet, thank God, but you want to make sure that you don't fall into one of these patterns so you don't wind up going down that path. So this was a short teaching just to give you something to think about. Now, once again, I want you to share this video with whoever you know is struggling with infidelity and can't get, seem to get over it, uh, can't seem to break through from the trauma of the past, can't heal, can't move forward, and is looking for a way out. The purpose of these Facebook Lives is to give you a nugget of information because with every new video, with every article, with every blog, with every conversation that you have, it should allow you to have an aha moment. At the end of the day, we're all trying to discover the why of the affair. Why did this happen? Like we were in a great relationship and out of nowhere this thing just, just took place and I don't understand and can't figure out how we got here. And when you are stuck in not understanding the why, what happens is it keeps you from properly healing and moving forward. And it also makes you vulnerable to the experience happening again. Because if I don't know how it happened in the first place, what's going to prevent me from doing it again if I haven't discovered the why? And so here's one indication of what that why actually is. So I hope that this was helpful. Uh, before we go, I want to leave you with a few quick announcements. If you have an iPhone or an Android, I want you to go to your app store and download the Couples Academy app where you can find our podcasts, our videos, our articles, our blogs. We're also going to be uploading these Facebook Live videos to that app so that you can stay connected with us. If you have any questions that you want answered, you can text it through the app. It comes directly to us and we respond. If you're interested in a free session, feel free to uh, sign up for one through the app or go to couplesacademy.org. We're excited about that. For all of those who are interested in trying to really improve their communication and they feel like that's where the biggest struggle is, like I think we can get through this, but we're struggling in the area of communication. Go to our website, theaudacityofmarriage.com, and you can get a free chapter from the book, Help, My Mouth is Killing my marriage. It is a phenomenal chapter. Once again, I want to thank you all for being a part of this Facebook Live. Continue to inbox me your questions. I'm getting responses all week long from people who are really benefiting from these sessions and asking great questions. We are here to serve you. We are here because we love you. I may not know you personally, but I am invested in your success within your relationship. So whatever we can do at Couples Academy, we are here for you. Love you. See you next week.